Welcome back, everyone. It's Friday morning, and we have another show for you. We have a, some great uh, people we're going to bring on. There's a lot of questions already in social media. I have some real interesting quiz questions coming up. And, of course, anything that I say is not meant to diagnose you or replace your medical care. Check with your doctor before taking any of this advice. Uh, that being said, Steve. Um, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I tell you what, we have uh, Rachel, one of the most patient. She's been on from the very beginning. And Rachel, I'm going to unmute you, and we're going to bring you on with Dr. Berg for your question. Rachel, welcome to the Dr. Berg Show. Hi, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Rachel. Um, thank you for taking my question. Um, I've, uh, I've been watching all your videos about keto and, and intermittent fasting, and um, I, I've implemented it into my own life, but my question today is for my child. I have a six-year-old son um, who has acid reflux. He's had it since um, he was an infant, and um, we thought that it had resolved, but over the past few months, um, several indications have come up. His dentist has seen pitting in his teeth. He kind of gurgles in his sleep, and I've even noticed a little bit of um, um, sleep apnea at times, which all can indicate that the acid reflux is still very present. His pediatrician has put him on um, 15 milligrams of lansoprazol a day to control the acid, and and I just... I, I've by watching you, I know the side effects of the medications and the contraindication, all of the, the bad stuff about the medicine. And so I'm just wondering, as far as a child is concerned, you know, everything is geared towards adults. But as far as a child, what, what can I do as far as this lifestyle for him to help manage his acid reflux? Yeah, 99.999% of the time, it's going to be related to uh, what he's eating um, at that age, you know, usually in an adult, you would just give them betaine hydrochloride or some acidifier to increase more acid. But with a child, it's usually going to be something very, very obvious with the foods. So, um, what does he, what does he normally eat? Um, he is, um, he loves sugar. I will admit that <laughs> he is, he's got a sugar tooth. Um, he, he also is a snacker, um, which he gets from me. So I've kind of narrowed it down. Maybe the snacking is not helping, but he don't, he loves citrus fruits. He loves, um, sugar and just, you know, all things kid. And so getting him to be healthy and, and, and vegetables and, and things like that are kind of a struggle with him um oh, yeah. i did try to get him to drink my apple cider vinegar and lemon water the other day and oh he thought it was awful so <laughs> i'm like imagine. you know i need your help and to kind of guide me how to just kind of ease him into this how, how old is he right now he's six yeah yeah there's a it's uh well listen i think you have a better shot now than when he's a teenager because uh, at least, uh, so you want to get him involved with <clears throat> maybe um, slowly replacing the sweets in the house with uh, keto-friendly sweets. Have him help you in the kitchen making um, these cool uh, keto, you know, cookies or whatever, different recipes. Get him involved and start replacing the sweeteners uh, with uh, maybe xylitol because that tastes almost identical to sugar and that way he won't know the difference and uh, he's eating something sweet and at least you're going to start to change his diet that way um, I would also imagine there's probably some food allergies simple food allergies it could be to eggs it could be to cheese dairy it could okay. be to nuts um, so those are other things I would do as well but you're going to have to get all the sugar out of the house so he's just not exposed to it. And you're going to see huge changes. Um, we started with our granddaughter, um, no sugar at all from birth. So it's a lot easier. Um, so um, for your next kids, definitely start with that. Don't even have the sugar available. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's um, that's what you're dealing with. It's, it's his foods, his diet. And I think I do have one video on what to feed kids. Um, you know, maybe with him, you keep fruit around. Um, do he healthier. Loves fruit. He does love fruit. That's a step up. Um, and then maybe you do, um, maybe have dates and figs around, something sweet. Maybe some, I don't know, um, sweet potato, something like that, versus, you know, like pasta grains, because the gluten, the grains, 
That can create the uh, irritation of the stomach, and then it starts coming up as acid reflux. And here they're treating the symptom, but no one's really looking at the foods at all, unfortunately. But I think it's a pretty simple issue. So I would just do those two things, okay. but um, and then don't even have the sugar in the house. And that way, he he'll search for it. He can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> would um, something like the apple cider apple cider vinegar drink benefit him? Like maybe if I put some cran apple I, in it, or I think I would probably put it in my electrolyte drink and put just enough so he can't taste it because it's going to be sweet, right. and he won't be able to taste it. And I think uh, that will. Um, That'll, that'll work a lot better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, you're welcome. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Rachel. And we uh, pray that your son gets over the sugar. It only took me 60 some odd years. So, you know, a little patience there. Anyway, Doc, why don't we kick things off with one of our great quiz questions? So how much taller are you in the morning versus at nighttime? When you wake up the morning, you're going to be a little taller. How much taller is an average person in the morning? Very important question, Steve. Oh, absolutely. I know, especially it's very emasculating for a man to wake up and be all shrunk up. So, uh, you know, I'm dying to hear the answer. Hopefully it's not too devastating on my otherwise uh, statuesque figure. Now, enough about me. Let's go off to a great shout out from the viewers around the world. We start off with the UK, Canada, Denmark, Spain, Norway, Pakistan, Algeria, Israel, South Africa, Cameroon, Zambia, Mexico, uh, Chile, uh, Trinidad, Tobago, Germany, Japan, France, Malaysia, good grief, Bangladesh, Iceland, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, hang on, it just moved up to the Philippines, Hong Kong, uh, where did I miss, Dubai, and all across the, Bu oh, the Netherlands and India, don't forget that, that's a lot of yeah. folks, and all across the United States, so we're so glad uh, that we have so many people interested in good health. Uh, along with the people we have online, which we'll get to shortly. But why don't we uh, go to Facebook? And uh, uh, Brenda from Facebook, what can I take to alleviate anxiety? Well, I would, um, there's many things you can take. Lemon balm, tea is a really good one. The big one, though, is vitamin B1. Um, you take B1 in the form of nutritional yeast, and you'll feel within probably three or four minutes really nice and calm and relaxed. That gets get, gets rid of the nervous tension that builds up, and it definitely relieves anxiety. Um, there's all sorts of um, ashwagandha. Is another, it's an adaptogen. It's an herb. There's a whole list of them. But I think um, the big one would be some B vitamins, uh, specifically B1. I would try start with that. And that might just handle everything. But you have to realize that when you consume sugar, that depletes you of B1. So that could be another issue is, is the carbs. And then, um, Steve, I also went on um, uh, my um, notification, my email notification. I answer some questions. Someone said uh, they were recently diagnosed with uh, prediabetes. And their doctor told them, to remedy this, you need six small meals a day. <laughs> that is just, I'm sorry, bad, bad advice because you're just going to make the person more hungry, create more cravings, raise more insulin, and then push the person right to a actual diabetes. So um, you want to do that. I would recommend that in reverse. I would take eat less frequent meals and not worry about the calories. And uh, I think that will actually help you with your blood sugar is much better. Wow, well, that's fantastic. Well, listen, speaking of bad advice, I think, and remedies for that, uh, we have Alan from Rapid City, uh, South Dakota, and he is uh, arguably the most relaxed man uh, on the universe, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you. Now, just look at Alan. Alan, unmute yourself, and I will, too, on this end. Welcome to Dr. Berg Show. Oh, that's great. And listen, Alan has, I urged him to get on the website because he's another one of those folks that has just a fabulous success story. Why don't you go ahead with that, Alan? Hey, good morning, Dr. Berg. I'm glad to be here. Good morning. Uh, yeah, it's been a long road, uh, 68 years young. And uh, back in October, my doctor uh, gave me the great news in my annual checkup that uh, I'm fat and obese and uh, I'm now a diabetic and I need to start metformin first thing in the morning and blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I looked at her and said, so how long is this going to go on? She goes, oh, for the rest of your life. 
And I'm like, wow, that's probably not going to happen. I don't think we're going to do that. Well, she said, your blood pressure is high and you just got a lot of stuff. You need to start. Uh, I want you eating uh, half as much as you do now. And I want you drinking 150 ounces of water a day because you weigh 300 pounds. And I'm like, like, I'll be floating, Doc. You know, I have enough trouble getting around. Well, you got to do that. Well, so anyway, long story short, December comes around. And I, uh, I'm all the way down to 297 now. And this is right before New Year's. And I'm like, wow, I dropped a whole eight pounds already. I need to start doing something else. So I started doing some research and, of course, found you and a few other doctors online. And I'm like, you know, those people got it going. I think they got the right idea. January 4th, I made the decision and uh, threw out all the sugar, did everything, stopped drinking. I haven't had a drop of alcohol since January 3rd. Wow. And uh, needless to say, instead of 305, I weigh 214 today. <laughs> Woohoo! But my... My A1C was 6.6, so that's she decided that I'm like I'm in trouble. I'm in deep trouble. And my fasting uh, blood was uh, that particular day. I think was 115, and she said that's just totally unacceptable. So I'm like, okay, I, I don't understand any of this stuff. So I, I got to learn about it. So I had to go in and I just did a ton of research every day. I would I would spend 10, 15 hours a day just listening to you and others, trying to figure out what's going on. So long story short, I got this thing under control to the, I'm like now I started out at being a low carb, like I did 75 carbs and very soon I did 50. Pretty soon I was down to 30. Pretty soon I was down to 20. So right now I do a 10%, 20%, 70%. So carbs, protein, fat. Mm -hmm. Um, But a high carb day for me is probably 25 now. And anyway, I just had my, labs Wednesday and my sodium has always been low around 130. And when she told me that she goes, you got to get your sodium up. I go, well, how can I get my sodium up if I'm peeing every hour? That ain't going to work. I'm drinking 150 ounces of water. All you do is go to the bathroom. Well, I started Himalayan salt. I, I have never eaten salt. I, I, I've never had it in my house. I don't even use it. I didn't know what it was. Now I have pink salt in my house. However, if I take the pink salt, which I've tried. I've went up to like two teaspoons a day. That sent my blood pressure to the moon. Hey, by the way, Alan, if you can get to that wonderful kind of punchline, we got a few other folks, but uh, tell uh, Dr. Berg about your recent results. I think five point something one, but we'll have to move along pretty quickly, but uh, let us know where you're at at this point. Okay. Cause that's where I'm at. Cause I already told him it was 5.6 and my fasting was 95, but my salt my sodium. So I, I do a half a teaspoon. I did that. I did a half a teaspoon in the morning, half a teaspoon in the afternoon in my coffee and in my uh, ACV lemon water. That didn't work because my blood pressure would go up. It would skyrocket. You know, it, I mean, skyrocket to me is 150 over 80. So I cut out the salt again. But in my blood test, my salt went to my sodium went to 138. First time ever. So it's kind of a long thing. And I started exercising 10 hours a week and I don't know, that's, so that's where I'm at. So do I get rid of the salt? Do I, it says you just got to eat salt. So, okay. So that's a really, really good question. I want to talk about that for a second. Um, all that water is diluting your salt. <laughs> it's going to dilute your sodium and then you're going to end up with um, not enough sodium and that's what's happening in the blood test. So they're saying eat more sodium instead of maybe cutting down the water to two liters instead of a gallon. Um, I would, um, I would have a, uh, maybe one teaspoon of salt. And, and if you want to want to do a better thing, just increase your potassium because you really need a lot more potassium than salt. The, um, if you have too much salt and your blood pressure goes up, all you have to do is increase more potassium to offset that. Then the blood pre- pressure comes down and now you have the right electrolyte balance. Um, I think the big thing that jumps out is just all this water. The water is going to dilute you. It's going to create what's called hyponatremia. It's going to make you weak. Um, unless you're exercising, like sweating like crazy, then start increasing like maybe two teaspoons. But I would just have like one and a half teaspoons at the very most of salt. I would do two liters of uh, fluids and I would definitely add more potassium, like a good amount of potassium. And keep doing what you're doing because everything is working nicely. Um, 
and then give it more time. I, and I think you're going to be in really good shape. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. All right. And also okay. go, go by your cravings, go by your cravings. Cause if you're craving salt, take it. If you're not, then don't go crazy with too much salt. Yeah. I never crave it. I, never yeah, crave I think, salt. I think uh, just do a moderate amount and then add more potassium. And that's really going to help you more than anything, especially with blood sugar and heart and all that. Well, that's great. Well, right, thanks, Alan, what a thanks, great, Alan. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a great story. I tell you what, let's go back to social media and uh, Beverly from Facebook. Why is my husband's blood sugar higher in the morning? He takes your K2D3 supplements. <laughs> so if you are on keto and your blood sugar is higher in the morning, it's called the dawn effect or dawn phenomena, which, which is kind of weird because where is the sugar coming from? You're not eating it but it's up high in the morning. <clears throat> All that means is that your liver is producing sugar and it's, it's compensating because you have insulin resistance. So your liver starts, it's called gluconeogenesis. It's you're making new sugar from non-carbohydrate sources, not from your diet, from your own fat, from your protein, and it's, it's making all the sugar. So what you can do to fix that, um, number one, give it more time, keep your carbs low, but also two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before bed. Um, acetic acid in the apple cider vinegar acts as a natural um, glucose uh, anti-glycemic lower. It just lowers your blood sugar. So it'll actually lower your blood sugar and you wake up with less blood sugar. So that's a real simple remedy. You can also do other things like berberine, but I think that would be a simple no brainer. And then, Steve, do we have an answer on our, our quiz question? We certainly do, which uh, asks, how much taller are you in the AM than in the PM? And uh, 80% say half an inch, 15% say one inch or more, 5% say a quarter inch. They're all over the place. Okay, so we, it's, it's not that much. It's actually two centimeters on average. Um, and, and so what happens, though, as we get older, we start shrinking way down, right? Um, and this all has to do mainly with the discs in our back. So we have this little disc, and I'm going to do a video on this as well. Um, the inside is all um, fluid. It's kind of a fluid-filled gel. And so um, that fluid-filled gel needs, um, you know, about seven, eight hours to expand back up to where it needs to be. So let's say you're getting six hours or five and a half hours. Uh, you're going to notice it's going to put more pressure on your disc. And then you may start, if you add more inflammatory foods like the sugar and the refined carbs and the omega-6 fatty acids, you're going to start getting potentially herniations in the disc, not even necessarily from a mechanical fall or anything like that. So, and you end up with back pain and this and that. So I will release a video on this um, to give you all the basic information on how to make your discs healthy and what you need to do. But... Um, like the gentleman just said recently, he started studying all this stuff. I think that is that is the key is for you to finally learn about your own body so you can control it better. And that's really what's missing is they don't really give us this good information out there. And so that's what I'm all about is to give you the correct information so you could uh, better control your own health. So um, unfortunately, you're going to have to spend the time to learn it yourself because you're going to, if you don't, then you're susceptible to get all this crazy advice out there. Um, that doesn't even make sense. It's not even true. All right. Well, anyway, let's go to YouTube. Uh, and, um, uh, Kathy Ann, she says, I'm 45 years old and my period hasn't come for 12 weeks and I'm not preggers. Uh, and she wants to know what to do. What's going on with her? How, how old is she? 45. 45. So, um, you know, some women um, go through early menopause, and so that could be happening um, because normal, uh, normally a, um, you have so many cycles that you're going to go through. Um, let's say, for example, there maybe is a problem with the ovary. I think probably the best remedy to help someone's fertility and just make sure that you have normal ovarian health, just to make sure. Uh, there's two remedies. One would be inositol. That really helps the pathway between the hypothalamus, pituitary, and the ovary. So if there's any type of problem with that, it's some, some simple inositol. It's like a sweet 
vitamins. It's a, it's a, it's, it used to be called a B vitamin, but they don't call it anymore. But it's a sweet vitamin because it, it almost tastes like sugar, but it's not. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is uh, royal jelly from bees. That supports the ovary too, and that can really help um, maximize fertility. So those two things you might want to try. But other than that, it could be a, a pre menopausal type change at 45 it's not uncommon normally it should be at age 52 but what's interesting is um you take someone postmenopausal, even in their 60s and you start getting their body healthy you start getting them on fasting you start to uh get them on keto and i've i've seen quite a few women start all of a sudden starting having their periods so um you know, this is called anti-aging, right, Steve? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you're right. Alan did so much research. I think it's so important for everybody. But I tell you what, drberg.com can keep you off of having to search endlessly through Google. There's so many great videos and resources for virtually any question um, you can ask. As a matter of fact, why don't we switch things up a little bit and why don't you go through all the great videos that are coming up and then I'm sure you can add to this list. Okay, so the benefits of wormwood extract. Uh, normally, you'll see that in uh, um, a lot of different supplements for parasites. So we're going to talk about the benefits of wormwood. Uh, also, this is a really probably going to be a popular one. The fastest way to get fat that I know of. If you really wanted to get fat, let's say you're you're auditioning for some movie where you have to be like another 30, 40 pounds. I will show you the fastest way to get fat. Um, also, so a really good bladder remedy if you have incontinence or you have you have a problem with infection in the bladder, a stone in the bladder, um, prolapse, loss of tone. There's a really ancient and very powerful remedy I'm going to talk about. Well, to also talk about autophagy, it's your a condition where your body recycles uh, old, damaged cell parts. What would what would stimulate it more, exercise or fasting? I think I might have talked about that last week, but um, I'm going to release that video this week. And uh, let's see, what else do I have coming up? Um, let me just uh, pull up. Uh, I tell you what, Dr. Berg, if you like, I'm going to do a quiz question real quick, and maybe you can save the rest of the list as an exciting close to our show. So let me blast okay. another one out here. And, Doc, there you go. All right. What are the two factors that cause insulin resistance? There's two biggies. And I really want to see if you guys know this because this is really important. If if you understand the uh, the two big things that cause insulin resistance, um, I mean, I have probably a million videos on this one topic. But I want to know what you guys think on this. Um, it'll tell me if you're watching my videos or not. Um, and also, Steve, just I'm just going to go ahead and before because I, I have my little whiteboard up right now. This is how I do my, like, uh, if I don't want to do my big whiteboard, I do my little one. Wonderful. We're going to talk about the absolute best remedy for foot and leg cramps at night. Nocturnal leg cramps or even foot cramps it can be very devastating. Your middle of the night, your, your muscle and your foot starts cramping up and very painful for people. Also, the difference between um, high-intensity interval training uh, versus cardio for your heart. What's better? Um, the updated remedies for a UTI. And uh, let's see here. Um, let's say you're doing keto and you're not losing weight or it's too slow. I'm going to give you an update on that, what to do. Um, let's see. Why is it so important to take apple cider vinegar before bed? So anyway, th this is just a short list. There's just quite a few. And of course, I'm always running out of topics steve so um if there's anything specific you guys want me to do a video on please comment down below because i read all your i mean a lot of your comments and uh, you guys give me a lot of good ideas um but they would have to be a topic that is not too narrow um but a little bit broader all right well i think i've got one for you christopher from youtube asks what is the best thing to take for an enlarged prostate okay I have a lot of videos on that one. I think you'd want to avoid dairy for sure, because if you're on dairy, like cheese and stuff, it'll just flare up that prostate. And uh, estrogen, like anything soy, will flare up 
the prostate. Um, those are the two things you want to avoid. Um, as far as taking things, there's a lot of different remedies, but all that's secondary. I would just clean up the diet. I would also avoid carbs too and do fasting. Those are the four things that I would do if I were you. Wonderful. And uh, how about another one from YouTube? Carol, who I'm sure loves her granddaughter, wants to know if keto and IF will help uh, her granddaughter with her PCOS. She doesn't say how old she is, but there you go. PCOS. Well, that relates to the, the question that uh, we just pushed out there, which I'll, I'll, I'll talk more on because um, um, insulin resistance is what's really behind PCOS. So anything you can do to correct insulin resistance and lower insulin is going to help with PCOS big time. Um, that royal jelly also helps with PCOS but not as much as lowering your insulin. So um, because the androgens that are, that are higher are coming from the high level of insulin and they don't talk about that. Instead, you know, they, you use metformin. Okay. Metformin will help you, but it's a drug. And how does it work? It makes insulin more sensitive. Okay. Well, aren't there other ways to do that naturally? There are. So anyway, um, do we have the answer to the last question? Because that will that will help me um, give more data on this topic too. Oh, it certainly will. And our Smarty Pants audience jumped right on it. 90% say too many carbs and too many meals. 10% say not enough fat or high levels of cortisol. Who's right? Okay, 90% are right. It is the two things. It's too many carbs and too frequent eating so every eat, eating too frequently and eating too many carbs those are the two things that um, are the more, most important things to know about making a very very uh, fast metabolism because a slow metabolism really comes from this insulin resistance and all you have to do is do intermittent fasting lower your carbs and you're going to correct that so there are so many conditions that you can correct by those two actions um, but if you're only doing, um, let's say you're only doing keto without intermittent fasting, you might not um, see very much weight loss, especially if your metabolism is slow. And on the flip side, if you're on intermittent fasting, you're not doing keto, you're going to have a hard time getting into ketosis because every time you eat, the carbs are going to keep the insulin up. So it really is going to be necessary to do a combination of both of them, Steve. Well, that's terrific. I tell you, one more question from social media, then we're going to come back to our live uh, audience with Virginie. I think I'm just butchering her name. It's spelled Virginie, but she's French, and she has a beautiful way of saying it. Uh, but anyway, so Janet from Facebook, can you please do a video on burning mouth syndrome? You know, I was, go I was about to do that, but um, I think I'll add that to the list. Yes. Yes, All right. I will do that. All right, very Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Uh, Virginie, would you unmute yourself and let me find you here in the mix and we're going to put I you up with saying? Dr. Berg. There you go. Good morning, Dr. Berg. I am very happy for what the results have been in my life and my husband's. I am of celiac. I've had to deal with diabetes. I do bloat after eating vegetables and I've had hard time sleeping. And according to your videos, I have a fatty liver. So today my question is, on one of your videos, you said ACV or betaine hydrochloride. Since I do take hydrochloride, two of them, with all my supplements because I have a problem digesting. And I have a really serious inflammation with psoriasis. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think with you, I think it's going to be important to not only acidify your stomach, um, but to probably cut down on the vegetables um, because the fiber is probably going to ferment in your in your smaller intestine and not the large, creating a lot of bloating and gas and irritation. So you may benefit for a kind of more of a um, carnivore diet for the next couple of months. You might want to try that. And if you want to try maybe even also – a small amount of cooked vegetables or fermented, but not too many, because I think that's really going to keep you bloating. The other thing too, if there is a condition called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which 
it sounds like that could be a potential issue. Um, or oregano is a natural antibiotic that you can take just to kind of help clean that out. But out of everything that you're doing, the absolute biggest thing that's going to help you with your digestion is fasting and try to fast longer and longer because that's going to give your, your system a chance to clear out and heal and regenerate. Um, so that would be a good start. Um, yes. I'm not familiar with carnivore. What does oh, okay. that mean? That basically means you're going to do more um, meats, uh, more protein with fat than you are with, with any vegetable. Uh, of course, no fruit. So you're doing keto, but you're, you're doing maybe more meats, fatty meats. Maybe you're doing sausage. Maybe you're doing um, hamburger. Maybe you're doing some steak, um, organ meats, or maybe fish, maybe some eggs. But you're not doing any, any plants because sometimes with the digestive issue, um, those um, plant-based chemicals, which are numerous, can leak into a leaky gut and get into the immune system and create an inflammatory condition. So um, that's the only exception. Like that's the that's the time when I, I would recommend to kind of cut back. And because if you put someone in a very large, um, huge salad and they just they're completely bloated all day long. And we know they have some gut issues. So um, combination of maybe one meal a day, have a lot more protein and fat, actually have a moderate protein, more fat, and you might feel a lot better. So, um, and watch my video on that as well. Yes, I, I see a functional medicine doctor and he eliminated SIBO. And uh, so I do notice that... Uh, just following your instructions has really helped me. I've lost 30 pounds in, uh, since May. Wow. This is July, yes. And I've got 25 to go. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. All right. That's great. Thank Thank, you. Thanks so much, Virginie. Sure. And uh, she was very uh, helpful with getting some other folks to get their phone work. She's a real techie, I can tell you that. I tell you what, why don't we go to... Uh, Pat, he's from Eugene, Oregon, and let's get him up on the show. Pat, you're on with Dr. Bird. Hi, thanks for talking to us. Hey, Pat. Um, so I started doing uh, keto and intermittent fasting. I've only been doing it about a month now, um, but just doing it for some various health problems I've had for a little over a decade. Uh, I've had like Adre adrenal problems, um, acid reflux every time I lay down, gastritis mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But the main problem I'm having right now is, or I wanted to ask you about referred pain because I've seen some of your videos on referred pain. And I have this pain under, right under my left shoulder blade. And it's when I'm digesting food and it just seems like the, I've tried to keep track of the things that cause it, but it kind of seems like that list keeps growing. So I'm just kind of wondering... Is it just a possibility that I'm just, whatever I eat, I'm going to have this? I mean, I've, I've realized that the stevia definitely causes it. Um, when I eat, like, cured stuff like salami, that will cause it. Um, in the past, uh, tobacco and alcohol, I don't do those anymore. Um, uh, things like, you know, if I have too many carbs, um, sugar, which I don't do anymore, um, Ca yeah, caffeine. There's there's a big list, but um, I watched one of your videos about talking about the nerves that connect the gallbladder and the pancreas, and I thought that was interesting because it all started with 11 years ago. I had this knot on the right side of my neck, which I still have, and that just kind of seemed like everything started from there. From there, I got like this fullness in my ear, a TMJ, which I still have, but then it kind of just went down, and now. I have, you know, abdominal pains and stuff like that. But the main thing is this, this uh, problem uh, right underneath the left shoulder blade when I digest uh, my meals. Okay. Yeah, that's, I know what you're running into because it's, it's a difficult thing to try to figure out. Um, this is what I, I think that's going on. Of course, you know, make sure that you're doing the keto version that I recommend um, because that, that's going to help you. But I think that there's sludge in your bile ducts, which if you, if you look at the bile ducts, they come out from the liver and they don't just go to, um, they don't just go to the gallbladder. There's a, 
there's a connection also to the pancreas as the pancreas comes in there. And so the pancreas ducts and the bile ducts join at the right at the small intestine. There's a little point there. And I think there's a backup of sludge and that's gonna put pressure on your pancreas, which is then gonna refer pain underneath your left uh, scapula. And so it's hard to diagnose it because even on an MRI, sometimes the sludge doesn't really show up because it's very small. But the simple, simple remedy is to buy some Tudka, T-U-D-C-A, Tudka. It's a type of pure, it's a type of bile salt that is a little different than other types of bile salts. And that's going to thin the bile. And that's going to allow the more flow through these ducts. And you're going to see a lot of the pain go away in your neck upper back, shoulder blades on both sides. Um, and then you may want to just kind of go a little lighter on the fattier type things because you might need to build that up a bit um, and do more some fasting and things like that. And you already know there's certain things that irritate it. But I think once those ducts are free flowing, and I would take two in the morning on an empty stomach, hopefully you don't eat breakfast, so empty morning, and then two in the afternoon. And um, that should be enough Give it a couple days, and it's going to get better and better and better. So um, it's one of those really effective, simple things that it's really hard to figure out. But once you know what's going on, it's like, wow, it's better. And then watch my video on, on uh, I think it's on bile sludge. Mm-hmm. Goodness. So that's what I would try. Is that different? Because I've been taking the, uh, the gallbladder support that you guys sell is the, is the Tudka. That's, that's, that's a different thing. Yeah. Because the gallbladder a formula that I sell is probably, it's more meant to be taken at a meal to help you digest those, those oh. fats. Um, this one is, I recommend it on an empty stomach because if you take it with a the meal, then the food dilutes it. You need help with keeping these ducts really thinned out and, uh, between the meals. And, um, because if they back up, man, they can create all sorts of um, referred pain all over your neck, knots, and and you 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 think it's musculoskeletal. It's not. It's actually referred from your digestion. And Sorry, we lost morning, him for a moment. There morning, you go. Two in the morning on empty stomach, and then two mid afternoon on an empty stomach. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Tud cuts called. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. All right, that sounds great. Thanks so much, hey, Steve, uh, Steve. Steve, there was a guy. Um, I don't know if we talked to him. Um, uh, I think we did. He called a long time ago um, on this channel, and uh, he couldn't eat anything. He was literally dying because he couldn't even eat anything that make him toxic. So he took the Tud cut, and then he called back. I think, and he said just basically totally flipped everything around he's able to eat food now gain weight but um you know i the way i, I stumbled on that is I, I bought pretty much every textbook on bile bile salts and some older ones and i just happened to stumble on them like what is this this is fascinating and so um thank goodness because it's it's, it's one of those things that if you've tried everything else nothing's worked, then this, this will be the thing that works. Well, I, I don't know anyone that could forget that. He was from the UK and he said he was crying he, almost in, yeah. in relief and said that he could not bear to be conscious through most of the day. He was in such agony and that completely turned his life around. Boy, that was a fantastic call. So, you know, uh, don't give up folks. There's remedies out there many times, and I respect medical science, but many times they're busy and they just kind of wash their hands of it and don't dig deep enough. And that guy would probably be dead if it had not been for, you know, your deep research, so, or at least miserable. So that's terrific. Well, Dr. Berg, uh, Debbie from Facebook isn't quite so miserable, but her doctor's concerned about her decreased iron levels. Uh, uh, and what can she do to return them to normal? She didn't give us any evidence about her age or periods or any of that stuff. Just start eating more red meat and or some liver. Uh, that'll give you the best source of iron. Um, and, um, of course, spinach won't give you the right type of iron. So that's not what you want to do. You want to have more 
animal products, red meat is going to be the quickest way. If you don't, you don't like liver, you can take liver supplements. And there's a really good one. Um, if you get, and you have to search out where you can find it, but it's a spleen extract. Um, and it's, it's very, very good for anemia, iron anemia for women, uh, spleen extract. Um, you know, it's, uh, it might sound strange, but it seems to work really good or more of a, like a liver organ, uh, like a, grass-fed liver extract, um, or actual liver, or red meat. Wow. All right. Well, listen, it's time for another uh, quiz question, and this is a true or false one. Okay. Disc herniation can occur from a high refined carb diet. Is that true or, fa- or is it true or false? All right. Audience, jump on it, and they've been doing great. By the way, we're so grateful to social media, both Facebook and YouTube. They are just cramming us with questions, and that surely makes uh, the show go around, that's for sure. So, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to butcher her name. Katalish, I can't uh, say it. But anyway, she's looking for post-surgical diet after cosmetic surgery. The diet surgeon recommends high-protein, low-fat, low-salt, says, I'll regret it if I don't do what they say. It's contrary to what I know now. After uh, cosmetic surgery, is uh, how important, Doc, is food to your recovery? I think it's not as important as fasting. I think uh, any any surgery, especially of the face, uh, if you did a, I mean, a three day fast or longer, oh my goodness, that that's going to create so many interesting things because it's going to start to create uh, repair genes that are actually kicking repair cycles and. Um, all sorts of wonderful things with autophagy where your body's recycling old tissue and you're, you're going to start healing a lot faster. And of course, um, if you don't want to do fasting, it's fine. Just do a very good amino acid product have, or you can do fish for your amino acids. That's going to be important to have those. And of course, make sure you provide your body with all the recovery nutrients. And that would be a nutrient dense foods like the cruciferous vegetables, trace minerals, uh, and fatty foods, avocados, you know, things like that. You don't want to go low fat. That's for sure. That's what I would do, Steve. All right. Well, that sounds like sound advice. Uh, Walid from Algeria. Can you hear us? Walid, sir, can you hear us? Well, how yes. about, oh, Hello. yes. Okay, very good. Uh, we don't have your picture Hello. up. Hello, everyone. Hello. Please go ahead with your question for Dr. Berg. Go ahead, Walid. Okay. Well, uh, if someone eat too much food, large amount of food, and he feel uh, bloating and he feel uh, so heavy, is there any solution uh, the, that can reduce that feeling? Yes. In fact, uh, in America, we have Thanksgiving in each year, and this you, everyone crams all this food into their stomach. And I found a solution that you can just keep eating for hours on end. I'm being a little sarcastic, <laughs> um, but what you can do is you get um, you can get um, betaine hydrochloride, <laughs> betaine hydrochloride. It's a supplement, and it's an acidifier, and uh, we keep it on the table. And you take like a four or five, okay, uh, before the meal, maybe a half hour. Take another four, another half hour. Take another four, <laughs> and you're going to find that your stomach is going to go down because it's helping you digest. Um, adding more betaine hydrochloride is a Real simple solution to bloating, okay. and uh, this way you can win those contests of uh, eating more food. You know, the uh, Steve, uh, Steve always enters those contests where you have like how much food can you cram down your throat. He always wins. So I'm a victor. Yes, you know I think it'd be interesting to have a salad eating contest, right? Um, that really wouldn't work because all that that fiber probably would just be like. It's not, it's just going to, it's going to clog you up. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, that's what I would do. Betaine on a cord. You can also do apple cider vinegar is a good thing to do. And there's other herbs you can do like ginger that will help as well. But there is a, um, I have a new advanced, uh, digestive formula that has a combination of betaine on chloride and apple cider vinegar powder. So that's another option too, but you can also just, Find it, find app, uh, find these products other in other places as well. Well, that's terrific, uh, Waleed. Thank you so much for calling in from Algeria. That's fantastic. And uh, from all over the world, we have some answers to the question: True or false? Disc herniation can 
can occur from a high refined carb diet. And our audience, uh, 98% say true, 2% say false. It's actually true. Now, you would think that a herniated disc would only come from a fall and injury. Not so. Because a uh, uh, high-carb diet, especially diabetes, metabolic syndrome, uh, high levels of glucose can all create inflammation in your discs. And that can actually cause um, that herniation. So the herniation doesn't even have to hit your nerve. It can bulge out into the inside of the disc. And over time, that acidity creates um, inflammation. And you can actually have um, a situation where um, the food that you're eating is inflaming that disc. And 40% of all low back pain is called discogenic. It comes from the disc itself. And it's not even putting pressure on the nerve. It's the nerve endings in the disc itself. So the only solution that I know of is to change your diet, cut down the things that create inflammation, omega-6 fatty acids, you're going to have to get off that. And uh, this is why you go on keto, all of a sudden your back pain goes away. Well, that's something else. I don't know if we should scold the 2% that got it wrong, 98% got it right. Let's give them another chance uh, as we're rolling through these. All right, what is the benefit of apple cider vinegar taken before bedtime? Okay. What's the big benefit of doing that? All right, well, that's fan fantastic. Let's uh, get another answer. And again, thank you all for being so vigorous on your answers. Let's see. JoJo from Facebook, what can I do for dizziness when I stand up? This has been happening more frequently. Don't know how old JoJo is, but what do you say, Doc? Well, first of all, check your blood pressure. Um, see if it's uh, low. If it is, you take more salt, um, but let's say it's not. Um, what you can do is just support your adrenals. I have a lot of videos on that. Um, the other good thing to do is to take your blood pressure when you're maybe sitting or lying down and then take your blood pressure when you stand up, okay? And look at the difference. Um, you wanna know what happens, um, uh, especially to, uh, even your pulse rate does it go down. Does your does your systolic the top number go up and down? And then watch my video because I explained how to uh, use that to analyze what's happening inside your body. Because when you stand up, normally your your blood pressure should go up to compensate. If it goes down, that means that uh, your adrenals are just so weak they can't push push uh, the pressure the, the blood up to your brain. So you kind of pass out. So you may need electrolytes, but usually it's more you need to support the adrenal. Fantastic. Well, I tell you, an old stopping ground of yours, I think, uh, Kathy from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, is uh, on with us. Uh, Kathy, go ahead with Dr. Berg. Hi, I was, I was just, just wondering, wondering about, about keto, and, and I have a, a uh, hypothyroid, plus also, also my adrenal glands. I'm going to work on. What would, what you, would recommend? you recommend? Do you do you know if you have Hashimoto's uh, hypothyroidism or? Do you no? know? I don't, I don't know. know. I've, I've never, never been, been told, told that. that. Okay. 90% of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's. That's an autoimmune, so it's not even really a, a primary thyroid. It's just an autoimmune, which is uh, usually originates from the gut. Okay. And, and if that's the case, then you want to support the gut with a good probiotic, things like that. Um, now, adrenals are another thing. Um, so you, are you going off that quiz that we did, or are you just um, you just know because of your symptoms? Uh, I, I we did do the quiz, quiz, but, but um, and those, those were my symptoms. symptoms. Okay, yeah. I think I think what I recommend for everyone is to get on the basic keto plan that I recommend, and you can just download that on our site. Um, but um, that that way, you may find that uh, a lot of your symptoms clear up to the point where um, you might just need to stick with that and not have to address the thyroid or even the adrenal. So I was. I always recommend do that for a couple of weeks, see how you feel. Okay. And then in the back of the book, even in also the, in videos, I tell you how to tweak it, you know, tweak your thyroid, tweak this or that. Like hypothyroidism, you, you might need uh, some selenium if it's Hashimoto's. If it's not, okay. then you might need some um, zinc and um, iodine from sea kelp. Um, or you might need to support the adrenals. One thing that I'm doing right now as an experiment is I'm training my body to get more sleep. Um, 
for years, I was getting six and a half hours of sleep. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to try an experiment because I just realized I'm like, wait a second, I'm doing all these videos on sleep and here I'm only getting six and a half. So I started getting eight, nine hours of sleep and I'm actually liking it. But to do that, I have to literally force myself to stay in bed, go back to sleep several times. So uh, at first it was like, four times a night. Now it's like just uh, once a night I'll get up and then go back. And then I, so my body is actually being trained mm -hmm. and I think I'll stick with it because I like the extra sleep. Um, boy, I can just do these videos a lot more A to B, right, um, right. less editing. So, um, and that's going to support your adrenals big time. Okay. So focus, so focus on, on the, uh, the, the simple, simple keto, keto to start, start and, and getting get more, more sleep. sleep. I would do that. Yes. Okay. okay, okay thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. That's fantastic. It's great to know that, uh, you know, the people watching do your quizzes and, and take your counsel and so on. So that's, uh, that is fantastic. All right. So let's go to our latest quiz and see how the audience, especially that 2% did. What is the benefit of ACV taken before bedtime? This time, 70% uh, say it reduces blood pressure and sugars. 20% say it improves digestion. Another 10% say it improves insulin resistance. Do we have any winners? You know, um, you're all right. Um, but the big thing that it will do, especially for um, people with insulin resistance and pre-diabetic and diabetic, is help your blood sugars. So it's a really good um, antidote for high blood sugar, especially if you wake up and your blood sugar is high. Now, if you're, if you're uh, taking it, you're going to also notice that your insulin resistance is going to be less and less because it's going to make insulin more sensitive. So there's some great data on this. I'm going to share that with everyone this come upcoming week, but it's such as you take two tablespoons and a little glass of water. I wouldn't take it right before bed, maybe like an hour before bed. And then Watch what happens in the morning. You're, if your blood sugars are better, if you have better insulin resistance, your sleep's going to be better. Your weight's going to be, you're going to wake up losing more weight. A lot of things will improve and it'll speed up that, um, all the symptoms that go with insulin resistance, like a fatty liver, high blood pressure, weight gain, cognitive issues. Uh, but there's a lot of benefits from having, um, um, better blood sugars that go far beyond just diabetes. Well, that's fantastic. And this final quiz question for today, I have a feeling we're going to have some consistencies in the answers. Go ahead, Dr. Bird. Okay, frequent snacks, true or false, frequent snacks throughout the day can help you with overeating and weight loss. All right, drum roll audience, uh, have at that. And let's see. So we have run through all our wonderful callers. Let's go back to uh, social media. And let's see, uh, Amora from Facebook, I have an increase in phlegm, yuck, in recent months. Is this normal? What should she do about her phlegm? Well, um, you know, there's a lot of things that cause excessive um, mucus, things like that. And I think the first thing I would look at is, you know, the diet, are you... Do you do? Do you add dairy? That will create um, a lot more mucus. Uh, are you doing more sugar? Um, it's usually related to something you're eating. Um, the other thing that it could be your immune system is a little uh, sluggish. It could be reacting from something. In which case, um, fasting, zinc, vitamin D is essential. Um, I just want to do this quick little plug thing with vitamin D. This is a new product. It's basically, it's a liquid vitamin D and zinc, and it's great for kids, babies, and people that uh, just want the combination of D and zinc. But don't make this one mistake like I did. And I got to have to change the label because I say you can put it underneath your tongue. No, 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 no. Don't do that because the taste is way more bitter than I thought, and uh, you'll be tasting it for hours so you want to put it in some water or put it in your food, but not underneath the tongue directly. So um, make mental note of that, Steve. Okay, and a question for you. Uh, you've got 10,000 IUs in your wonderful, uh, you know, capsule formula. What would this relate to in terms of a dosage? Well, you take 10, uh, this is a, a lot lower dosage. It's mainly for kids. So you're dealing with uh, 600 IUs, okay, 600 IUs. Got it. So... It's not like 10,000 like my other supplement. And this also gives uh, 11 milligrams of zinc. So it's really good for kids. Um, 
and babies because they don't need that much. But if they're getting sick or they're going through the winter time and you want to keep their immune system up, they, they, it's hard to give kids um, supplements and vitamins. It's like unless it tastes good or they don't taste it at all. So um, and the importance of zinc and, and vitamin D for kids. Oh, my gosh, it's, it's so important, especially if they're babies. Wow, well, that's fantastic. Well, as I suspected, we have a pretty consistent uh, answer to our last question of the day. A hundred percent say that that's absolutely false. You know, I was trying to trick you guys and I couldn't do it. Um, so, so we know you guys are really smart on that. Um, that would be the worst advice in the world to lose weight by eating more frequent small meals. Um, you know, I... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a video on what's called the nibble diet. Steve, have you ever heard of the nibble diet? I think I've lived it. <laughs> 17 snacks a day. That's the diet. 17 snacks a day. This way, you it puts you over in control of your eating. So that way you're not restricted. That's <laughs> such the opposite, isn't it? You're, you're, com you're going to put the person completely out of control with their diet because now your hormones are in the driver's seat and they're going to just totally dictate, you know, you have to eat now, you have to now all these snacks. Now, at first it might be a great thing. This sounds good. It's like, Hey, I can eat all these snacks, but then you're going to start putting on the weight. You're going to have blood sugar issues. Oh my gosh. You're going to be tired all the time. Um, so that's that's probably why the, that book did not become a, a number one bestseller in 1978. Oh, everyone died of some uh, disease as a result. I'll tell you what, ever since mom and dad died, I've had no parental guidance. And the last thing you want to do is give me, uh, you know, open license to do whatever I want. And I must say that intermittent fasting for me is so great because once you're into it, I simply don't consider eating until after two o'clock every day. So it relieves me of the burden of trying to make a responsible choice. I can't make a responsible choice if you give me 18 hours a day to eat. But if I know that I can, you know, eat something good over a two or three hour period, I'm sated because I have something healthy and nice. And frankly, it's not a tiny serving. And it just gives me a routine that never before in my life have I been able to uh, follow with all my odd sort of uh, proclivities and uh, just that I want, you know, some reward immediately. And it's just fantastic. And I do thank you for that, Dr. Berg. Not been the best yeah. keto guy, but boy, intermittent fasting, boom. <laughs> So, so Steve, um, the, the, another explanation of why they say you should do it is because animals eat all day long and they're not fat. Well, there you go. Well, if I had to chase my lunch, that might be a different issue. I just open well, the refrigerator. Well, cows eat all day and they're, they are usually on the fattier side, but also humans are not going to be grazing on grass all day or, or greens. Um, so it's most animals don't eat all day in the wild. They're constantly searching for food. Uh, they might not find food in a whole day. So I don't know where they got that rationale, but... Um, yeah, try taking down a wildebeest and see uh, how many, how much you eat all day, I'll tell you. It's just crazy. I know. It's some, it, it was just funny. And I saw this book, and I'm like, I have, to, um, I have to do a video on it. That's fantastic. Well, Dr. Burr, guess what time it is? High noon. Listen, guys, I want to thank you again for all your great questions and your attention. Stay tuned for more videos. I'll see you next week.